Hey guys, Sarah Little. <laughs> um, I am going to be telling you guys about my birth story with Donnell. So, Donnell was a surprise. Mila, Mila was planned. Um, and I haven't really told many people that just because Dee and I were early in our relationship and you know things were moving quicker because we had dated in high school and we knew each other already so Mila was more planned we both knew we wanted to be parents we were in love still are in love um, but we were just ready I don't know it was weird we were just ready and here we are two kids later <laughs> But Donnell was a complete surprise because we knew that he was going to be going on this deployment. We really wanted to hold off on having another baby until he was home so he could help, so he could be with us, so he could help raise the child um, in that first year. So at the time, I was still working at the bakery and my boss remembers how, because it was only a year ago, <laughs> how I was when I was pregnant with Mila and she was noticing things and I was noticing things too honestly because I was clumsy I was dropping things I was ditzy just not Sarah right not focused so one day in particular this guy came in and ordered cookies or something like that and I dropped his bag on the floor. The bag was like closed and everything but I dropped it and it hit the floor but it was the last two cookies. So I looked at him and was like, I just dropped this on the floor but it was our last two. Do you still want it? <laughs> the guy was like, yeah, whatever. And he took it. But Bridget's in the back laughing. Like, what are you, <laughs> what is wrong with her? So I come back there and she was like, yeah, because we had kind of been talking about it. And she was like, yeah, you need to go home and take a test. I was like, okay. So I had been thinking that I was going to anyway. And I stopped by the Walgreens on the way home and I got a test and I said, Bridget, if I call you, it's positive. If I text you, it's negative and we're all good. She's like, okay, cool. So I'm in the bathroom, I take the test, and like, lit, like you know how it takes like two to three minutes or whatever. Literally, as soon as it hit those lines, I didn't have to wait the two minutes. It was positive, like I was pregnant, pregnant. Okay. So, I call her, <laughs> and she's like, wait, why are you calling me? I was like, well, she was like, no. I was like, yes, so. That was a fun conversation. So I went out into the living room. My mom was at our apartment at the time, hanging out with Mila and Dontarius. I go out there in the living room, I'm like, D, can you come talk to me for a second? And he had just gotten off of work. And when he gets off of work, he wants to chill. He wants to sit there with his girl, watch TV, eat dinner. He doesn't want to do much, okay? So the last thing this man wanted to do was get up off the couch and come talk to me for a second. And I get that, no shame, okay? We're good. Um, but I was like, no, like you really, you really need to come talk to me, please. So he came into the, the bathroom and I held up the test. <laughs> and he holds up Mila and was like, yes, yes. And like shaking Mila, not shaking her heart, but just like, yay and uh, so excited. I was like a little bit like, oh shit, are we gonna be able to do this? Is this like a thing now? Um, obviously not gonna do anything, you know, we're doing it, this is it, we're doing it. But um, yeah, it was a interesting way <laughs> to, to walk into this pregnancy. <laughs> fast forward nine months, well, let's fast forward eight months. Um, we had to move out of our apartment because Dee was going to be deploying, but he had to go do a training camp, which was going to be a part of the deployment as a whole. They were going to factor that in. 
um, so that his deployment was completely a year, so it would have been June to June. Um, so he went to a training camp in California, so we moved everything into a storage unit, came back to my mom's house, me, Mila, and Dee were staying here, and he was just here for like a couple of days, and then he went to California. And then um, while he was in California, he was on this, um, like, I don't want to say a mission because it's not really what it is. He was put into this thing called the box and it's basically a big tent area where they aren't allowed any contact and you're not allowed to know where they are and they are basically off the grid. And it's kind of like a training for if you're overseas and something happens and you're in a combat situation, you need to know that this is serious, like no contact. So the only way that I could contact him to tell him that I was in labor was through like random text messages between me and him and his, on his commander's phone. So he messaged me, I guess he messaged me like twice while he was in there asking how I was doing if I was in labor because we knew it was coming soon um, because I couldn't text him so he would just check in or I could call the Red Cross and let them know that I was in labor. That's what we thought, is that we could call them, say we're in labor, they would pull them out of the box, everything would be fine, he would contact me, we'd be able to talk, they would send him home. Well, the day comes, it's July 16th, and I went to my doctor's appointment, I had an appointment that morning, and they checked me and I was already five centimeters dilated when I went to the appointment and 100% effaced. So that means that like everything was very thin, everything was ready, we were good to go. So my doctor said, okay, I need you to do something. I need you to go home and go for a walk and get everything moving because you are definitely gonna go into labor soon. So, so now I am leaving the doctor's office with my fifth, four, 14 and a couple weeks, almost 15 month old. And no, she was 15 months because that Monday we went to her doctor's checkup for her 15 month checkup. So I leave there, I go to the bakery and I tell my boss that, you know, what the doctor said. And um, she's like, why are you standing here? <laughs> like, are, why aren't you in labor? <laughs> so um, I got grabbed some things from the bakery and then we went home and I put Mila down for her nap and just walked up and down the driveway. I was like, well, I mean, I guess if this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing then. So I walked up and down the driveway. I tried to call Red Cross and the lady on the phone told me that I could not get a message to him until the baby was born. So when the baby is born, you can call, give them their weight, their length, the name, the gender, the time of birth, and that's it. They'll just send off like a little card to the soldier and let them know that their baby was born. Thankfully, Dee knew that that day was my doctor's appointment day. So he texted me and asked how I was doing from his commander's phone. Well, I'm in labor. <laughs> so that was probably around like 11.30 at this point. I'm steady in the beginning stages of labor and I take a shower really fast because I was just walking up and down the driveway sweaty. And I knew that this process was going to be long because with Mila, it was probably about a 10 to 12 hour total labor. So I thought, well, you know, I'm about to be in labor for 10 or 12 hours. Let me take a shower. Let me get, I had my bag already packed. Let me grab my bag. Let me call my mom. Let me call his parents and his sister. And let's text my sister because I forgot to tell you that in Mila's birth story, my mom texted my sister to tell her I was in labor and never hit send on the message. So my sister didn't know for like a certain amount of time. 
Um, anyway, so we texted everybody. His mom and his sister and my mom all came to the house. I drove with my mom to the hospital, but they all came in and my mother-in-law prayed over us and we got all of our stuff together, got Mila and got in the car. And I was filming everything because I wanted Don, I wanted Don Terrius to be able to see how things were happening, how I was. I wanted him to be able to look back on it later. So I will show those clips at the end of the video um, so you guys can see them too. So we got to the hospital and I signed in. I'm definitely in labor at this point. Water still has not broken, so that was good. I, I didn't, they broke it for me with Mila, so. So I figured they would probably break it for Donnell as well. So we got to the hospital, got upstairs, and they were checking us in and getting me hooked up to machines and all that, checking me in, getting the paperwork, doing all that stuff, right? Um, I don't think I needed blood work this time because I, no, maybe I did need blood work. I don't remember actually. Um, yes, I did need blood work. I remember the lady coming in. So she was doing, taking my blood and everybody was like, you're so calm. Like, why are you so chill if you're in the labor? And I'm like, I, can I be happy? Like, I'm in labor, I'm about to have my son. I knew what I was having, I was excited. I, I don't know. And some of the nurses were like, you're the most calm pregnant woman, or you're the most calm laboring woman I've ever met. So like, I think they didn't really believe that I was in labor. So my doctor came in and he checked me and while he was checking me, I had a contraction. And he was like, oh yeah, yeah, like that was pretty strong. So he uh, broke my water while I was having the contraction because it everything is really tight with the baby. So the water, the um, sack that the baby is in was just you know had a little bit of leeway or wiggle room, so he could break it easier. So he broke my waters, and from then it was like, <laughs> I mean, we got to the hospital at probably around 12 o'clock, right? checked in everything was done i was in the bed relaxing by one maybe 1 30. well um they took they did my blood work they came in checked me out i was doing really well so i actually told them we could wait on the epidural for a minute um they just you know let them know and don't you know no rush i'm good so well that i wasn't good that i wasn't good at all <laughs> i had to go to the bathroom and I was up just like I was with Mila. I was like not feeling good. Not it was not a good situation. So then, um, my mom. So at this point, they had to give me an epidural, so everybody had to leave the room. But my mom could stay and do what Dee did. So she stood in front of me. I held a pillow. I bent over, and she was holding me. Well, she said while I was hold while she was holding me that I was sweating and shaking. Because while this is happening, you're still having contractions. So you're still like in enormous amount of pain and you can't move. So I'm bent over, I'm sweating. She was like, Sarah, you are shaking so hard. And I tried to relax, tried to breathe, closed my eyes, was bent over and he gave me the epidural. By this point, it was probably like two o'clock, maybe even later than that. But I was relaxed after that. So I got the epidural, I was laying on my side and I could just feel like this crazy pressure. It was over like the next 45 minutes-ish. Just crazy amount of pressure. And I looked at my mom and I was like, mom, like, I don't know why, but I feel like he's coming like right now. And the nurse overheard me and she's like, what? We just checked you and you were like, nine-ish centimeters let me check you really quick hold on so I put my leg and the doctor wasn't there yet he was um, across the street so they had to call him so they pulled my leg over they checked me and the nurse said oh yeah that's his head <laughs> his head's right there so they quick called the doctor really fast they were like emergency you need to get here now she's about to have this baby get here now so I guess, okay, so the lead, then, the, then the nurse was like, roll over on your side and lay on your side and try not to think about it. Try to just sit there and relax. 
right? Which is the reason why she said that is because if the nurse were to deliver the baby, the doctor wouldn't get paid, which is something that they don't want to tell you because they want the doctor to get paid. The nurses are 100% fully capable of delivering that child, right? But if I were to deliver it and the nurse were to do it, the doctor wouldn't get paid. So, baby boy was coming. There was no stopping that little guy. So I, I was like, I'm done, I'm over it. So I pull my legs over. The nurse is like, oh, what? Okay, and so she's getting dressed. She's getting all of her stuff on because she's like, oh, okay, this, like, this mama's not playing. She's about to, to birth this baby one way or another. I mean, literally his head was coming out. Like, I, we had to do what we needed to do. So she gets gowned up. We get me up in the stirrups. My feet are up there. I'm ready. I'm pushing. And doctor comes flying in there, gloved up, got his stuff on. The first doctor that delivered Mila had like a shield. She had like a hair mask. She had like all of this stuff. This doctor, I mean, he was like gloves and a gown. Let's go because I don't have time for all that. So I'm up there, I'm pushing. It is 3.30. Donnell was born at 3.33, or 3.32. Maybe it was like 3.29. Anyway, it was literally three minutes of labor, or three minutes of pushing. So I push, and I can feel his head coming. The doctor's helping me get everything situated and try and, um, just make sure that I'm not tearing and moving stuff around so that Donnell's head can come out. Well, literally three minutes and that boy was out screaming. Doctor flips him over, suctions everything out and sets him up so that um, my mom and my mother-in-law could cut the cord and then they could hand the baby to me. Well, Donnell pees all over everybody. <laughs> There's just like pee flying everywhere. And my mom's trying to cut the cord. I'll see if I can put that video at the end. I don't know if it shows too much, but if it doesn't, I will put it at the end so you can see him peeing. Um, but everybody's like, happy birthday, and oh, nice way to come into the world, and it was really cute. But um, yeah, he peed all over everybody. <laughs> so they put him on my chest. Um, I'm having like a moment with him. We're bonding together, breastfeeding, doing all that, and then they wrap, um, after I finish breastfeeding him, they take him and they weigh him and they um, get his measurements and they do all of that to, you know, document that. And then they wrap him up for me and bring him over to me and Mila comes in and she gets to sit up on the bed with me and she's like, what is happening? Like, why are we here? Why is my mom hooked up to all this stuff? Where, who, what is this thing in my mom's arms? Um, but, so there's a picture of her I'll put up here, but she's just like, not a fan. Anyway, so everybody leaves and they're about to move me into a room. And my mom leaves, she was gonna go get me something to eat with my sister and um, so it's just me and Donnell in the room together, which was really nice. Um, but me and Donnell were just laying together, which was nice, but the nurses kept coming in and asking me if I was okay and I'm like, yeah, I thought I was gonna be moved. And they're like, well, we can't move you right now because there was an emergency C-section and they had to bring all the nurses that are qualified to move you and the baby into the surgery. So I was just sitting there for, I, it might have been like an hour and a half. We were just sitting there together, um, which was great. I mean, I got to spend quality time, alone time, quiet time with my baby boy, and it was nice. So... But it was interesting that like two nurses came in asked if I was okay and I'm like, yeah, am I moving anytime soon or what's up? <laughs> so then we finally get to our room, we get settled and relaxed and I'm breastfeeding him and they take him for a bath later that night. Again, it was like a long period of time before they came and got him. Um, and I actually, I didn't go with him to do the bath, but I actually did go with them to do the, um, testing for I forget what it was they had to prick his toe I don't remember what the test was but they have to do it before you can leave the hospital anyway by this point D has been on five flights and all across the United States to get here 
and he wasn't going to be there until the next day at lunchtime. So um, we stayed the night. My mom stayed the night with us, actually, and Mila went and stayed the night with my um, in-laws. And D came the next day around lunchtime to see us. And it was so great. I got to see him, and I hadn't seen him in a month. And he was meeting his new baby boy and seeing Mila, and it was great. There's a bunch of pictures of him like pass out asleep because he was on so many flights and doing so much over that, you know, I guess it was like 15 or 18 hour period. Um, so he was so exhausted. So he slept. He was like passed out asleep in the hospital bed with me and in a chair and it was, I'll, I'll show you pictures at the end. But anyway, that was my baby boy. Came in the world, quick, quick, quick. My doctor, after I had Mila, she said 10 to 12 hours is a pretty short labor. So if she has another one, y'all gotta get to the hospital quick because it'll go fast. And they weren't kidding, they weren't kidding. Cause it was, I started laboring around 10 a.m. and he was born at three, so 3.30. So not long at all, but yeah, it was a really, it was just, it was a fun experience. I don't know, I really enjoy their birthdays because it's such a short period of time, but it's so monumental for so many reasons. You know, it made me a mother and then it, made me a better mother so it was just I don't know call me crazy but the, the day that I gave birth to both my kids was the best day of my life and one of the most invigorating and empowering days so yeah I'm gonna cry if I keep talking about it but yeah I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you haven't already please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you enjoy my content and if you haven't already check out some of my other videos and also do me a favor and follow me on Instagram at sarah.r.little. I appreciate it in advance and I hope that you guys enjoy these pictures and videos. Thank you. It's baby time. <laughs> say hey, Mila. This is for Dada. You say hey. Love you. Just broke my water. Got my IV. And we're working on an epidural. Cause you know I'm not gonna do it natural. <laughs> We love you. Can't wait to see you. Yes, we can't wait to see you. Your son's gonna get here before you are though, sorry. <laughs> Last little video of baby boy in mommy's belly. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I got it! Thank you! Oh you just hit on me, man. Oh, that is not cool.